This is the story of Alexandra Fyodorovna, a woman whose life was full of love, tragedy, and controversy. She was the last empress of Russia, but who was she really? Alexandra Fyodorovna was born in Darmstadt, Germany in 1872. Alex, as she was known, had a happy, uneventful babyhood. Her loved ones often referred to her as Sunny, a nickname that spoke to her cheerful nature. Despite the warmth of her sunny disposition, Alex was a child of great sensitivity and determination. From a young age, Alex was no stranger to tragedy. Throughout her childhood, she faced the devastating loss of several family members, including her beloved mother, Princess Alice, who died of diphtheria when Alex was just six years old. This early experience with grief and mourning, along with her mother's teachings about death and the afterlife, had a profound effect on her personality. As she progressed through her teenage years, Alex devoted herself to her studies with great diligence. She excelled in a wide range of subjects, including history, literature, and languages. She showed a particular proficiency in playing piano. In fact, her grandmother, Queen Victoria, even requested Alex to showcase her musical prowess in front of a room full of esteemed guests at Windsor Castle. Although Alex agreed to play, the nerves and self-consciousness she felt made it a distressing experience. As she grew into a young woman, Princess Alix was described as tall and stunningly beautiful, with bright blue-gray eyes and remarkably long golden hair. However, behind her striking physical appearance, Alix was a shy and reserved individual who struggled with social interactions, particularly with strangers. Although this may have given off an impression of emotional coldness, those who knew her closely would attest to her genuinely kind and thoughtful personality. Despite growing up in a world of luxury and privilege, Alex remains grounded in her compassion for the less fortunate, often donating personal funds to charities. In 1894, Alex's life took a dramatic turn when her fiancé, Tsarevich Nicholas Alexandrovich, became Emperor of Russia after the sudden death of his father, Tsar Alexander III. Alex and Nicholas were married just a few weeks later, and she took on the new name Alexandra Fyodorovna, becoming the Empress of Russia. The public viewed their rushed marriage as being in bad taste, and Alexandra herself was grappled with guilt and inner conflict over the timing of their wedding. In her own words, it was a mere continuation of the masses for the dead. As Alexandra ascended to the throne as Empress of Russia, it was clear that she was not fully prepared for the role. Despite her best efforts to carry out her duties, she struggled to navigate the complex political and social landscape of her new position. Alexandra was not well liked by the Russian court or the general public of Russia. Her German heritage and perceived aloofness made her an easy target for criticism and distrust. During the chaos of the First World War, rumors circulated that Alexandra was a German spy, but she strongly denied these accusations, stating, It is the country of my husband and son. I have lived the life of a happy wife and mother in Russia. All my heart is bound to this country I love. As Nicholas was away to lead the Russian army, the Empress and her daughters stepped up to fulfill a critical role, caring for wounded soldiers. She dedicated herself to the role of a nurse, going so far as to establish her own hospital in the Catherine Palace. For Alexandra, tending to the needs of those who were suffering became a deeply meaningful pursuit, and one that helped her cope with the immense stress and uncertainty of the war. As Alexandra became more involved in the government, her reputation plummeted further. Accused of being a bad influence on her husband, Nicholas, and ruling with an autocratic style, she faced harsh criticism from the public. Blamed for Russia's military failures and high casualties, her appointment of ministers based on the opinion of the controversial mystic Grigory Rasputin was seen as a detriment to the country. In addition to the political turmoil, Alexandra was facing a personal struggle that few knew about. Her beloved son, Alexei, suffered from a life-threatening disease, hemophilia. Alexei's fragile health was a perpetual source of distress for Alexandra, as each new episode of his illness, ranging from minor to life-threatening, plunged her deeper into a despairing search for a cure. In her quest for answers, the Empress turned to Grigory Rasputin. Despite criticism and scandal surrounding Rasputin, she believed he held the key to alleviating her son's suffering. Alexandra's constant worry about her son's safety took a toll on her mental and physical well-being. The experience of her son's hemophilia left her traumatized. 
As the monarchy crumbled and her world turned upside down, Alexandra lost her royal title and privileges, which added to her already mounting anxiety and depression. She began suffering from a range of physical symptoms, including insomnia, exhaustion, and poor heartbeat, which left her struggling to even leave her bed. She spent most of her time confined to a wheelchair, seeking solace in sewing and reading the Bible. Despite the many challenges Alexandra faced throughout her life, she remained steadfast in her faith until her last day, finding comfort and strength in her belief. After the Russian government imprisoned her and the rest of the Romanov family following the Russian Revolution in 1917, she accepted her fate with dignity and grace, but ultimately met a tragic end alongside her loved ones. What are your thoughts on Alexandra's role in Russian history? If you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay curious about history.